The following is distributed by the Berean Call. You're listening to Search the Scriptures Daily, a program in which we encourage everyone who desires to know God's truth to look to God's Word for all that is essential for salvation and living one's life in a way that is pleasing to Him. In this first segment of today's Search the Scriptures Daily, we're continuing through Dave Hunt's book, Seeking and Finding God, subtitled, In Search of the True Faith. Now, we're currently in chapter 8, and uh, the title of that is Concerning Prayer. And although prayer sometimes becomes a form of seeking and finding God, for many people, it occurs in a time of crisis. It's... uh, They take a shot at seeking God, hoping he'll bail them out of whatever bad situation or circumstance that they're in. It's Dave, we talked about this last week. It's sort of the faith in the foxhole scenario, and which, as you explain in the book, it's for a number of reasons, it doesn't make any sense. Now, of course, there's you list a number of other attempts at prayer that are just as bogus. I just mentioned a couple. Those who are interested, you know, we have our our uh, radio programs, the iPods, are archived, so they can go back and look at earlier programs if they'd like. But anyway, you mentioned making, having enough faith or believing strongly enough as the key to answered prayer, or prayers in the form of a positive affirmation, like, you know, the saying of Emile Q.A., this was in the uh, 20th century, early 20th century, his his line was, in every day and every way, I'm getting better and better. And people would repeat that like a mantra. And for some people, it worked. But, but that's, that's not faith. That's uh, at least not faith in a God at all. That's just mind power, right? Mm-hmm. I know. Well, that's uh, unfortunately not just for everybody out there. When you get in trouble, then you cry out to God. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, an atheist is crying out to God that he claims doesn't exist. Um, But um, they think that somehow, and we talked about this last week, somehow if I can only believe, you know, so that's what people think is faith. Mm -hmm. Well, if I can get myself to believe something, uh, I've got to believe this, you know, whatever I'm praying for, I've got to believe this, well, so they're they're putting their faith in the technique, in the in the concept, in the power. Well, in their faith. Yeah. Faith is in their faith. Right. And in fact, some of these positive confession guys say it literally like that. Have faith in your faith. Um, well, that is not faith. Jesus, as you alluded uh, to earlier, he said, "Have faith in God." In Mark eleven. Eleven twenty two. Right. right. So, look, here's a, here's a basic problem. Maybe it's not God's will. You know, am I going to force my will on him? Mm-hmm. Well, if I just had some technique, if I could just believe it strongly enough. Well, if things happen because you believe they will happen, then you don't need God. That's just mind power, mm-hmm. as, as you mentioned. Um, or maybe it's not God's way, what I'm asking for. He's going to do it another way. Maybe it's not God's time. I can't force God to do something when I want it to be done. So there are a lot of considerations here. But prayer is not a religious technique to get my own way. Mm-hmm. We set our sights on what we want. Then we spend the sweet hour of prayer trying to talk God into working it out for us. Mm -hmm. That is not Mm -hmm. faith. Dave, you you made a confession last week, and so did I, that um, we're trying to explain why this is not biblical, but you've fallen into it. I've fallen into it. Mm. Uh, Many years ago. Many years ago. Not (laughs) recently. No, no. But what we're saying here is that we can understand people uh, in a time of crisis or whatever, looking through what might be expedient and so on, and they're missing mm-hmm. what the Word of God says. They're not doing it His way. Mm-hmm. But the verse that you, you know, you correct me if I'm wrong here, but the verse that you uh, said really you took to heart was Hebrews uh, chapter 11, 
verse mm-hmm. 6. But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently look for their solution to their problem, for going to get what they want or what they're crying out for. doesn't say that, does it? It says, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And, you know, whether for an, you mentioned an atheist or an agnostic or somebody who thinks they're a Christian but really doesn't have a relationship with the living God. They're not really, they don't know his character. They don't understand what he's about. They're just crying out to anything that will solve their problem. And for some Christians that know Christ, still, they've got the cart before the horse. They're looking for the reward or for the solution and not his character and understanding, better understanding of him and who he is. Well, Tom, we're very self-centered creatures, and we want something for ourselves. Not too many people have really surrendered their lives 100% to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can remember when, um, well, I had a pain down here somewhere, and I, I could literally feel food going past an obstruction, that's what it seemed to me, <laughs> pretty serious sign. Mm-hmm. I was sure I had cancer somewhere in there. I mean, I wasn't totally sure, but I hadn't been to a doctor to check it out. And, uh, you know, in that situation, this is many, many years ago. Uh, I didn't cry out, oh, God, please heal me. I had a lot of reasons for it, four young children, mm-hmm. a wife, and and so forth, and my own hopes and desires to live a little longer. But uh, that was perhaps the first time, I can't remember exactly, but that may be the first time when I totally surrendered to God. Lord, if you want to heal me, that's up to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever you want. But I want your will, not my way. Yeah. Okay. And that was uh, quite a crisis. Mm-hmm. Well, the, but Dave, as, as we've been saying, over, you've been saying over and over again, you can't do any better than that. <laughs> His will versus what you think, right? Well, he's a little smarter than we are. <laughs> and he does love us. Beyond what we can even imagine. You see, so there are people who dedicate their lives to Christ. They come forward. Maybe it's an emotional time. Mm-hmm. And uh, then, uh, what do you know, pretty soon they've got to rededicate and re-re-dedicate. The problem with that is they were the heroes and God was the villain. Well, okay, God... I'll knuckle down and and I'll give up everything and I'll live this sober and sad, self-denying Christian life and miss out on all the fun. But if I don't, you're going to zap me some way or another. So, okay, God, Mm -hmm. that's a dedication. Well, I'll dedicate myself to you. But the heart is not in it. Mm -hmm. And God is not being honored. I should surrender myself to him as the one who loves me and his way is best all he wants is what is best for me now, you and i got some problems going on right now mm-hmm. well i i haven't said lord please heal me of this uh, we're in his hands i mean we're on our way to recovery by god's grace but mm-hmm. uh and and people are supporting us in right, prayer and right. they're praying for us to be healed right yeah mm-hmm. So we want God's will. And why would I want to um, get my legs uh, back to working and and some of the other things that I've had recent operations You're talking about swelling, slight swelling. It's kind of... Right. Yeah, well, that's getting better. But anyway, mobility, Mm -hmm. because it's still... I don't get the message from my brain to my feet. I think Mm -hmm. I want my foot to go there, but... doesn't yeah. always do that. Now, what it's for some that don't problem. understand, Dave, you've had a second hip replacement. On the right side. Yeah. Right, yeah. 
uh, only one on the on the left side. So they do a lot of cutting in there, and the nerves get right. disconnected. But anyway, Tom, why would I want to be in better shape? <laughs> only one reason: I want to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. I want to. Right now, I'm involved as uh, some people out there know in writing what I think could be my most important book. Cosmos, Creator, and Human Destiny, subtitle, A Response to the New Aggressive Athe the new Wave of Aggressive Atheism. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to confound the enemies of the Lord. And I want to rescue people because these atheists are number one bestsellers. Right. They're but, evangelists for yeah. the idea Mm -hmm. That there is no God. <laughs> right. What is that? And uh, they are determined to stamp out all mm -hmm. belief in God. They say it's not only stupid, it is wicked. Mm -hmm. It must be stamped out. And they have been doing a very effective yeah. job. I know. I want to confound these men. Yeah. Dave, as though they had a criteria for wickedness, right? I mean, that, even that's absurd. Well, Tom, I'm, I've been in this quite a long time, and they would say they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. But uh, and of where, course, the fool says in his heart, "There is no God." So right. There are a lot of things. They but say. where are their morals? Right. Where what is the basis? Mm -hmm. Well, it's built into us by natural selection and evolution. You know, it's in our genes. Um, wow. Richard Dawkins says, one of his books, his first book, "The Selfish Gene." It's only genes that run us. You know, they we're just a bag of mm. a container for our genes mm. to help them survive mm. and uh, francis crick uh, well he's a co-discoverer of the language of dna he says you think you have uh, real desires that you have lo you love your wife and 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 you have ambitions and and personal thoughts and so forth no, those are. That's just. Uh, that's all created by your molecules mm -hmm. of your body. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a brilliant. It's like man. a burp, isn't it, Dave? Then can you say yeah, it? Yeah. love is just like a burp or something like? That. Well, uh, um, <laughs> man, this is absurd. These guys are brilliant in some ways, but Tom, um, maybe we've quoted before. Let me just finish this thought here. Uh, here is George Wald. Nobel Prize winner, mm -hmm. Harvard professor. I think he may be dead now. I'm not sure. Uh, and he says, we know that there's no spontaneous generation. Uh, Louis Pasteur, he finished that one off. Uh, we know the law of biogenesis. Life only comes from life. So, but if you to take that 100%, then the only way life could be here is a supernatural act of a creator, mm -hmm. and we will not believe in him. Therefore, here we are by an act of spontaneous generation. Yeah. That's stupidity, but they will not believe in God. Mm -hmm. They're determined. Well, one day they will find out. Right. Dave, getting back to uh, the issue of prayer and seeking and finding God, you know, you say, and this is so important, uh, related to Christians, um, or related to anybody who, who wants their prayers answered or is crying out for help or whatever, you say that God, the God we petition, cannot be a stranger or one from whom we are alienated. W why not? Well, look, if... Um, well, I, I often use the example of a little boy or whatever, and he is just been disobedient, he's been rebellious, he's been impossible to handle, he never does anything, you know, he's asked, uh, he's a slacker at home, it doesn't help his mother, who may be even a single parent, but then he wants something. Oh, mommy, could you get me have this? Well, wait a minute. Why should she give him what he wants right now? He has been a rebel. Is that how you reward rebellion? <laughs> Once in a while, 
So we have to learn our lessons sometimes mm-hmm. from God. And uh, sometimes, you know, every prayer is answered, but some of them, the answer is no mm-hmm. or wait. Yeah. Well, we're going to get into, uh, if we have time, some, some conditions for prayer. But before that, Dave... Uh, again, ref- looking to Christians, those who profess to really have a relationship or or know God, mm-hmm. many times they get drawn off to um, uh, deviate from what the Word of God says. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's why, to me, it's so key. Many of the things that you articulated earlier are based on your trust, your faith in God, your knowledge of Him, your understanding, your relationship mm-hmm. with Him, the experiences that you've had over the years, mm-hmm. not only in understanding the Word better, but <laughs> walking with Him, okay, mm-hmm. knowing Him. And, of course, God's Word, His revelation to us, He lays all that out for us. Now, you say um, the idea that faith is a kind of a force or something that we can manip- manipulate, right, right. Uh, which is, um, I mean, it is pervasive in the mm-hmm. church, especially among the word faith, positive confession people, and so on. But you give some uh, problems with that. First of all, you say, the Christian is not under law, but under grace, Romans six fourteen. Yet grace has no part to play in this supposed law of faith. All right. Where did they come from? That was invented by um, by uh, Pat Robertson. In his. Well, you know, I mean, he was the soft sell of it, but it really goes back to the the positive confession guys, the word faith. You know, everybody from uh, right. Kenneth Hagen to Kenneth Copeland, right. and so on, and it's now Marilyn Hickey and you know um, Joyce Meyer. I mean, we're seeing various forms of that. Joel Olstein, you know, his father John Olstein was a part of this whole movement. Now we're seeing it sort of massaged around, you say the Bible never even hints that the realm of the Spirit is governed by laws similar to those governing the physical realm. They've got it dead wrong. Well, Tom, again, that's what the atheist would say. Uh, you think that um, you, you, know, you had a miracle. You think you had an answer to prayer. Mm-hmm. And you didn't realize that Well, it was a scientific... I mean, if you only knew the laws of science, you would understand that this is how it came about. So this is what the skeptics would say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, one day, science will have answered everything. Science will... You don't need God anymore because your God is a God of the gaps, they call it. Mm -hmm. Your God was... A postulated in order to explain what science hasn't yet explained. But one day when science has explained everything, we don't need your God anymore. Now, this is mm-hmm. what the positive confession people are doing. And this is what uh, Mary Baker Eddy did. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jesus was a scientist. He knew the laws. Mm-hmm. Now, if we could just understand these laws. What do you know? There's a law of faith. There's a law of miracles, Pat Robertson said. Hmm. Jesus never does a miracle except by the yeah. law of miracles. Yeah. Dave, I can remember clearly. This was, you know, his laws, the secrets of the kingdom, uh, his book uh, to that end. I mean, this has got to be at least 15 years ago. But I remember him articulating why he he was interested in this and why he wanted to get into it, because he was never a part of the, you know, the word faith movement and so on. But he said, I want some continuity. I want some consistency with how God is going to answer my prayers. So that's how he got into these laws, because, hey, don't laws work by cause and effect? And if you do this, this, and this, you're going to have this result? Yeah, another problem with laws, Tom, is uh, you don't have to be a Christian to follow laws. Right. The laws of aerodynamics. I hope every pilot is following the laws of aerodynamics when I'm in the airplane. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't get in the cockpit. Well, you can't do that anymore. I used to. And say, are you guys Christians? Uh, no. You don't have to be a Christian to be a good engineer or a good pilot. Mm-hmm. And this is exactly where they are putting us back to. Well, if it's laws, and in fact, uh, Pat Robertson says it. Kenneth Hagin said it. Kenneth Hagin said, I used to wonder why non-Christians got, got miracles in their lives. Mm-hmm. And then God showed me, 
Well, it's the law. It's the law of faith. Mm -hmm. And it works for anybody, whether you're a Christian or not. Now, that is not what the Bible mm -hmm. says. It's not even rational. Right. But, Dave, it's it just doesn't go away. You know, we could throw in, well, now he calls himself David Young E. Cho in the fourth dimension, the same kind of thing. Why do the Buddhists, you know, get what they get? Well, because they know these spiritual laws and so on. Um, let me go over the last two of these things. You say the physical laws God has established are intended to control man. Even Adam and Eve were subject to them and to limit what we can do with God's universe. But this presumed law of faith does just the opposite. It allows each person to become a god, which was a part of their teaching, as, as you know, waving a magic wand over the physical universe and thus does not fit the pattern of physical laws that God has established. Yeah, well, he has laws, mm -hmm. but his laws, uh, he established them. But there's no such thing as a law of faith. But anyway, right. even if there were a law of faith, this is what we're saying here, then I can make that do whatever I want? Yeah. No, I can't use the law of gravity uh, to levitate or whatever, um, but I have to obey the law of gravity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Dave, we have seen because we've uh, we've had programs on this, a number of programs on the secret. Now we see it coming back in a secular vein, but the bottom line is still the same. I'm the master of my fate. I'm the one who controls. It's it's I'm the one who, uh, whether a mantra, an affirmation, or something like that, I'm the one who's in control of my destiny. They intend to whatever God they believe in. They only believe in Him or it or her or whatever in order to get what they want. Right. And they think they can use. It's like, you know, science of mind. Science of mind is based upon the idea that there's this uh, universal mind out there. But the universal mind in religion, science of mind, it has no mind of its own. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you just use it right. to get what you want. It doesn't make any sense, but selfishness just drives the, yeah. the human race. Without a doubt. And the idea, you know, as we saw, that the, these ideas that come out of Hinduism, that come out of uh, the mind sciences, we end up being God. So they began teaching, you know, uh, we're little gods under God. He works by faith. We can work by faith and so on. Paul Crouch even wrote a newsletter about that, and he and Benny Hinn are said it more than once on right. the TV program. Yeah. Now, you conclude uh, this, these four ideas are dealing with these issues. You say the very heart of the prayer pattern Jesus taught his disciples is, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. That's Matthew 6.10. But the imagined law of faith would accomplish just the opposite, gaining for man the desires of his own will. Indeed, the teachers of, in this movement insist that it destroys faith to pray, if it be thy will. I mean, how tragic is that? Well, Jesus said it. So did Paul say it. Everybody prays. They uh, may not admit it, but when they get in a difficult situation, mm -hmm. if you're, you know, you're dying in the wreckage of a, car and you're crying out for help to there's nobody around who do you cry who would you i don't care how staunch an atheist you are you've been preaching atheism all over the world you're going to cry out to god but as we've mentioned in this program that's not genuine uh See, that's one of the reasons, Tom, why when you're in hell, in the lake of fire, it's too late. Because the torment is so great, you would promise anything to get out of there. Well, God doesn't want that kind of a promise. Mm -hmm. You didn't give him your heart when you had the opportunity. Now, this is not, this is not your heart. This is under coercion. And this is something that you feel forced to do 
in order to be rescued. Mm -hmm. And that is a prayer that will not be answered. Mm -hmm. I should correct myself there because sometimes God will answer the most desperate prayer, but he does it because he knows the heart. But I don't think anyone in hell has that heart. The Lord willing, uh, next week in this segment of our program, we're going to talk about conditions to prayer. There are many conditions that God lays out, and we'll, we'll go over them. For more information about the Berean Call and a free subscription to our monthly newsletter, call us at 800-937-6638 or visit our website at www.thebereancall.org.